every Sunday try and sneak up the aisle before Rod's aware that we're at the front. Good morning. I was asked a question this week in regards to a story this person had read. And the question was, would I put a flag on the church roof which said that we welcome anyone from the LGBT community? I was caught by that question. And so I asked, what would you do? Their reply was this, if we needed to put that flag on our roof, then we would have to put a flag for everyone else because God alone is holy, just and good. Our gospel this morning therefore stirs up this question. What is righteousness and where are its origins? Our gospel and our epistle specifically look to that question, so I look forward to sharing with you. Following this service, I'm heading out the back door to Parawai Church as we gather there for an 11 o'clock service. That service is intended to be done completely in Māori. I was there two weeks ago and there were more non-Māori there than Māori, which is funny. So I figured this, it's a wonderful opportunity to continue to extend who our God is. The difference is that we don't have to pay the power bill, the phone bill, the maintenance, or mow the laws. God is good. God bless us as we trust and we fellowship together this morning. A warm welcome to you all on this beautiful autumn day. We begin with our call to worship. Grace and peace to you from God. God the Lord be with you. The Lord this is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Together we say our opening prayer. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, so that we may truly love you and worthily praise your holy name. Through our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Please sit or kneel for our prayer of confession. God has promised forgiveness to all who truly repent, turn to Christ in faith, and are themselves forgiven. In silence we call to mind our sins. Let us confess our sins. Merciful God, we have sinned in what we have thought and said, in the wrong we have done, and in the good we have not done. We have sinned in ignorance, we have sinned in weakness, we have sinned through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry, we repent and turn to you. Forgive us for our Saviour Christ's sake, and renew our lives to the glory of your name. Amen. Through the cross of Christ, God have mercy on us. Pardon us and set us free. Know that we are forgiven and be at peace. God strengthen us in all goodness and keep us in life eternal. Amen. 
Our sentence for the day, to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honour and glory and might for ever and ever. Our collect for the day, together, living host, call us together, call us to eat and drink with you. Grant that by your body and your blood we may be drawn to each other and to you. We make this prayer in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This morning's reading is from Acts 3. Verses 12 to 19. And um, Peter speaks to the onlookers after Peter and John had healed the beggar. When Peter saw this, he said to them, Men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness we have made this man walk? The God of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus. You handed him over to be killed and you disowned him because before Pilate, though he had decided to let him go, you disowned the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you. You killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. By faith in the name of Jesus, this man whom you see and now was made strong, it is Jesus' name and the faith that comes through him that has given him the complete healing to him, as you can all see. Now, brothers, I know you acted in ignorance, as did your leaders, but this is how God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, saying that his Christ would suffer. Repeat then and turn to God so that you may so that your sins may be wiped out, that time of refreshing may come from the Lord. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. We will now say Psalm 4 in Tiffany. Answer me when I call to you, my righteous God, give me relief from my distress. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. Know that the Lord has set apart his faithful servant for himself. The Lord hears when I call to him. Sacrifices of the righteous and trust in the Lord. Fill my heart with joy when their grain and new wine abound. purify themselves, 
just as he is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. But you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins. And in him is no sin. No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. Hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The Holy Gospel according to Luke chapter 24, beginning at verse 36. Praise the Lord to God. While they were still talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. He said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts rise in your minds? Look at my hands and my feet. It is I myself. Touch me and see. A ghost does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they still did not believe, it because of joy and amazement he asked them do you have anything here to eat they gave him a piece of broiled fish and took it and ate it in their presence he said to them this is what i told you while i was still with you everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of moses the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He told them, this is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the Gospel of Christ. God, by your word, please teach us, strengthen us, correct us, and lead us in your righteousness, we pray. Amen. I met a, a woman who was in her 80s. She had recently experienced a number of difficulties. First was she had lost control of her car in soft metal. The fire service were engaged to help her exit the vehicle through the rear door. A couple of days later, she had a fall at home. She lives alone. Her husband, who was her husband for the first six years of their early married life before he died, so for these following 60 years she was widowed. She sat on the floor, she cried out to God, God, please help me to get off this floor. She remembered her St. John's alert alarm, she pressed it. They came, checked her, assisted her up, and eventually took her to hospital. In that hospital, she said this to me as she had a face full of tears. She said, when I was no longer able to drive my car, I rang my vicar 
asking if he would arrange for someone to pick me up, to which he was only able to reply, our congregation is elderly, we have no one to do that. So for the next six years she was unable to attend church, but she said, but I know that God was with me in this hospital room with tears, deep tears, she said, why is it that God has allowed all this to happen to me? She proceeded to talk about her childhood through the war years and the experiences of being prisoners of war during the Japanese occupation. These tears that she was carrying grew more and more as she remembered all that she had experienced from her young early years until the passing of her parents and the passing of her husband and now finding herself in the hospital. David in our psalm this morning was in exactly the same place. He was a man who was to know the promise and the favour of God upon him. And yet he failed in his uh, love for another woman. In spite of that, he knew the forgiveness of God and he continued to trust God. But in this psalm this morning, his prayer was, God, I trust you. But there are people who continue to judge me, who continue to stir up all that I did wrong. God, I know that you forgave me, but when they do that, it still hurts me deeply. God, will you just take this away from me so that I can do all that you require of me. But yet God, just like this woman, he said, I trust you. Our gospel is very similar to last week's John's account of the post-resurrection. This is the third week we are in this phase of the resurrection and it ends with Luke's account of the upper room. You recall Jesus enters miraculously and says those words, Shalom, peace be with you. The disciples were scared and Jesus knew they were. So he said, it's okay, look here, look at my hands and my feet. And if you're still worried, give me some food and I'll eat it to show that I'm not a spirit, that I'm in fact present before you. It was leading up to this event that the two people walking on the road to Emmaus some 20 miles from Jerusalem where they encounter Jesus and he asks what are you speaking of? You must be the only one that doesn't know what has just taken place. The woman went to the tomb and Jesus wasn't there and they're saying that he was resurrected. Jesus eventually sits with them. He provides bread and wine with them. He sups with them in the same way that he did when the disciples were in fear. Their eyes, like the disciples, are open and they realize who he was. Before they recognize him, he has gone. He now turns up in our gospel this morning. Righteousness. 
what is righteousness. Because often for us as Christians, we think the criteria to be in God's favour is to be in righteousness. 24 hours ago, I thought that too. That righteousness was reliant on how well I would be obedient to the things I thought God was saying to me. That I would fulfill all that was my duty to do in the days that God gives me. But throughout our readings this morning, we hear from the account in Acts where they begin by saying, why are you surprised? If you're not aware, the disciples had just healed the beggar outside of the temple, which they called beautiful. It's in that episode that we, we are reminded of those famous words that we often hear in hymns. Silver and gold have I none, they said to this beggar who wanted money. But what I have, I give to you. In the name of what? Jesus, stand up and walk. The question, therefore, in this epistle is, why are you surprised at what we just did? As if you think it was by our own ability that we did this. In our gospel this morning, the disciples are afraid for their own well-being. In that fear, they are unable to fully comprehend that in fact it was Jesus that was present. I was thinking of it this way. I heard someone say it would be like attending a funeral, perhaps here at St. George's, and you may have arrived late, so you sit at the very back, maybe thinking that you're the last one to arrive. You sit quietly, peaceably in that service. And then all of a sudden, someone comes and sits next to you. And it's the person who is meant to have died. And you think, how is this possible? It's precisely what the disciples were dealing with. This morning I want to gather all the words of our readings this morning and I want to share with you simply one thing. The disciples were full of fear for their own well-being. David was full of resentment at the way that he was being treated. This woman in the hospital was wondering why it is that she was suffering everything that she was going through. And yet, in our scriptures this morning, the disciples in Acts say, why would you think it was something that I could do? David, in his psalm, in his prayer, says, God, all these things are happening. And yet, God, I call to you. Righteousness is not an act that we do in a way that we can sustain, in a way that pleases God. Righteousness is the ability to constantly call out to God when things are tough. Righteousness is having the ability to remember that God cares and that God has always watched over us. Righteousness is when we come before God and God says, I will do whatever it takes so that you know that is me. Righteousness is about being willing 
to wait, to wait for God to answer all the depths of the cries in our hearts. Righteousness happens when we trust God. It's therefore God who teaches us righteousness. It's God who gives us. Therefore, in Him, we become righteous. Our readings this morning are a gift from God in that they are an opportunity to remind us simply that in our times, and we all have them, when we cry out, God, I am struggling. God, I can't handle that. God, why is this happening? God, I have nothing to give you. God's word always also reminds us that silver and gold you do not need. But what you have in God is all that you need. In the name of Oh Jesus, stand up and walk. Jesus has said in Matthew 18, verse 19 and 20, If two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, I am there in the midst of them. But this assurance Jesus gave us and the authority he has given us through Jesus Christ, let us pray to our Heavenly Father in the power of the Holy Spirit and in union with our Savior Jesus Christ. Let's give thanks. Heavenly Father, thank you for your love so very much that you gave your one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us in that cross and raising him from the dead. By doing so, you not only forgave us, and release us from the bondage of sins. You also restored the relationship and legally made us your sons and daughters. And as your word says, you have sent the spirit of your son into our hearts, crying of our Father. Thank you, Jesus, for your finished work, Lord Father, and making us righteous in front of our Heavenly Father with your precious blood, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for every day you are transforming us to the image of Christ. Let us pray for our church and the churches all over the world. Dear Father, we are the body of Christ. We give you the glory and honor for all that you are doing in our lives every day. Even though we can't see or understand your ways, your ways are always perfect. As it is said in Jeremiah 29, 11, the plans you have for us is to prosper us and not to harm us. The plans to give us hope and future. We come under your wings and commit our mind, body, soul, and spirit at your feet of cross. Lord Jesus, shine your light in us, through us, and over us. May we make a difference in the world for your glory. We are more than the conquerors through the gift of Christ. In the name of Jesus, we pray that the arrows of God scatter every satanic curse against a sign to steal the word in our church and the churches across the whole world. In the name of Jesus Christ, we command the reaper angels gather uncountable souls into the church. We together break the gates of hell in our life and the paths of darkness, bringing fear, confusion, distraction, temptations, sin against God in any form of addiction, mental illness, be broken and destroyed from the roots in the name of Jesus. We speak the eternal life said by Jesus in John 10:10 10, 10, over our life and let it start to manifest from this day forth in the name of Jesus. Daddy, we stand in the gap and come for the lost sheep. You are the God who leaves the 99 to go and find one lost sheep. We pray and plead in your name for those lost sheep. Please get them back together, Lord. As it is said in Genesis 1, Lord Father, let your word, Lord Jesus, let your word, let there be light, Lord Father, Lord Jesus. We speak for the lost ones who are not saved also, for our family members, friends and relatives and our neighbors, Lord. 
we proclaim your promise which is said in Acts 16 verse 31. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your household. We pray that you, your life, find them, Lord Jesus. In the name of Jesus, let this Logos word become a Rhema word in our life. Lord Jesus, we come in front of you for our pastor and our minister, minister and ministers in our church, Lord Jesus. As it is said in Jeremiah 3.15, Lord, you have said, I will give you shepherds after my own heart who will guide you with knowledge and understanding. Lord Jesus, together as a church, we speak the supernatural strength and joy over our minister, Lord Father. You have ordained them. Please, Lord Jesus, protect them from the enemy and encourage them through your spirit. Give them a healthy body and protect their family, Lord Jesus. Give them the wisdom to lead the church. Give them the shepherd's heart, Lord Father, and help them to make godly decisions, Lord Father. Let the fire of God be around them and our church. Lord Jesus, we come for our local community, Lord, as it is said in Matthew 18, verse 18 through 20. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you lose in earth will be loosened in heaven. We break down all the chains of darkness, drugs, addictions, the dark cloud of satanic rituals, all the evil spirits in the name of Jesus, which is over, Lord Jesus, our turn things, Lord Father. We speak life, peace, love, deliverance from the darkness, wrath of God, and Lord Jesus, we come to you, Lord Father. Let them get access to your kingdom, Lord Jesus. And let that no weapon, your word says, no weapon that is formed against shall prosper, Lord. We claim this promise over our land, Lord Father Jesus. Lord Father, right now we come for the people who is suffering, who has died, and like people who are mourning, Lord Father Jesus. Lord Father, we speak healing, Lord Father, who are suffering and who have missed their loved ones, Lord Father. We speak your love over their life, Lord Father. Let your healing touch be upon them, Lord Jesus. Lord Father, right now, we come for the healing, Lord Father, whoever, whoever needs healing in our church, Lord Father, or our family, Lord Father Jesus. You have said, Lord Father, with your stripes, we are healed, Lord Father. You have already borne all our Lord Jesus, all our disease in the cross, and we speak right now, healing in the name of Jesus over everything in our life, Lord Father. From head to toe, Lord Father Jesus, we cover ourselves with your precious blood, Lord Father. Heal us, Lord Father Jesus. Thank you, Father. And Lord Jesus, we pray for our country, Lord Father, and our country, Lord Jesus, all the rulers and MPs and MLAs and everyone, Lord Father. Bless them with your knowledge and wisdom, Lord Father. Help them to understand what the true, like truly the people of the country needs, Lord Father. Guide us and God us, Lord Father. We speak, Lord Father, for all the country around the world, Lord Jesus, where they need peace. We don't want, Lord Father, any like any fights or wars, Lord Father Jesus. As your word says, Lord Father, we speak, Lord Father, peace and Lord Father, godly wisdom and love, Lord Jesus, be covered all over the earth, Lord Father. We give all the glory and honor we, and we ask all this in Jesus' most precious name. Amen.